Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for joining me today. So you can see that today I'm going to be talking about the blended learning framework and the different elements that cultivate effective e-learning um, and what a typical week actually looks like. So we're actually going to see a sample timetable of how we include these four blended learning elements. So if you're interested, then please keep on watching. So Recently, I was talking to some wonderful educators in Africa and we were talking about what a blended learning week could look like. So I'm going to go through these elements first of all, and then we're going to have a look at a sample timetable. So let's first of all have a look at connection. So connections, as we know, in the online environment are so important because the online environment can often be very clinical and very cold. So we want to try to cultivate uh, connections by um, introducing explaining tasks letting students see your face promoting that social interaction and connection and just having check-ins um, my favorite phrase that I've heard a lot of educators use over these last couple of months is Maslow before bloom so I think this is um, the importance that connection plays in the online environment and I've got some suggestions here of um, how we can actually promote connections in a synchronous fashion. So we should be meeting our students face to face at least once per week as a touch point. And I know that elementary teachers will probably want to be able to see their students or let their students see them at least every day because those touch points are so important for early learners. So another element then that's really important is that collaboration piece. And so if we look at that collaboration, this is something that we would actually promote in the brick and mortar situation. So that means that we need to transfer the power of collaboration into the e-learning environment. And perhaps we could suggest that your students have a study buddy or a learning partner, a thought partner that they can work with and check in during different times of the week or you could actually design learning experiences to be completed as a group project that last two to three hours or collaboration could be in the form of just giving some peer or group feedback as well and I think this can be done asynchronously so you know we want to use that affordance of ubiquity in the e-learning environment and we also want to utilize that there is a lot of power in learning in an asynchronous format when students are not learning synchronously with you does not mean that they are not learning meaningfully and experiencing deep learning in the asynchronous learning environment. So another element then we can look at is the element of clarification and ensuring that your students actually do have a space to be able to ask questions and for them be able to clarify any misconceptions as well. And I think this can be done synchronously or asynchronously. So this is where we can actually provide clarification either on a discussion board asynchronously or they can email you or synchronously it could be um, the same that students can ask you in the chat box or they can actually post anonymously on a Padlet wall and ask you questions um, about the learning experiences or ask you questions just to seek clarification about some misunderstandings perhaps. So another element is the critical thinking conceptual thinking and this is where we want to engage our students intellect and we can use beautiful frameworks such as visible thinking routines and visible thinking routines are so powerful I think we can use them during learning experiences we can use them synchronously and asynchronously in so many different formats so we can actually also use guiding questions in the form of factual and conceptual questions that really elicit understanding after students go through some kind of learning experience that you have designed and of course we want uh, inquiry questions as well for students to be able to think about or maybe you want to encourage students to generate their own inquiry questions uh, using something like the question formulation technique and we want to really give our students ownership over their learning and using student driven questions is one way to really give our students more ownership and agency. 
So going back to these four elements, if we include these four elements in a typical week, then we know that we're trying to encourage more effective e-learning. And what could a possible timetable look like? So I've managed to work with lots of educators who have looked at this framework and then designed what a typical week may look like day to day. So they've looked at, you can see these four elements, connection, collaboration, clarification, critical thinking, conceptual thinking, and they've tried to put it in a timetable so that you can see how those elements work. So you can see on day one and day three, there's a synchronous opportunity for connection. Um, you can see the collaboration piece as well, which is both synchronous and asynchronous. You can see the clarification is asynchronous in this format. And then the critical and conceptual thinking is asynchronous as well, because we don't want to overload our students with being online in a synchronous fashion. I think that can be exhausting. And I think many schools have learned that when we transfer our brick and mortar timetable in a synchronous fashion to the online environment, that that has not been very effective. So we really need to be trying to showcase that affordance of the ubiquitous learning and asynchronous learning in this e-learning format. So I hope you found this video useful and if you have any suggestions on how to promote uh, effective e-learning then please put a comment in the section below and I hope to see you next time. Bye!